In this lecture, we're going to define a general form of Faraday's law. But before we define that, let's connect two very important concepts. So, in an earlier lecture on our discussion of the relationship between voltage and electric fields, we essentially said that the reason electrons flow inside a conducting wire is because of a voltage difference that exists between two and of that conducting wire. So this voltage difference essentially creates an electric field in which the electric field lines flow from the higher potential, the positive end, to the lower potential, the negative end. And it's this electric field that essentially creates an electric force that forces our electrons to move along our conducting wire. Now, our negatively charged uh, particles essentially flow from the lower potential, the negative end, to the higher potential, the positive end. So they flow in the negative direction along the x-axis. At the same time, our electric current, which is assumed to have a positive charge, flows from the higher potential, the positive end, to the lower potential, the negative end. So it travels along the electric field lines. So in a previous lecture, we were able to define the relationship between voltage difference and our electric field. So we said that the voltage voltage difference between two points A and B within our wire is equal to the integral from A to B of the dot product of the electric field and our infinitely small distance given by DL. So electrons move as a result of an electric field that is created because of an electric potential difference because of a voltage difference. Now. In another lecture, we also said that a changing magnetic flux induces an EMF within a closed loop of conducting wire. So it creates an EMF, which is the same thing as a voltage difference. So that basically implies since a voltage difference creates an electric field, then we have the following important principle. So a change of magnetic flux creates an electric field. So a changing magnetic flux creates an EMF, it induces an EMF, and that voltage difference within our wire in turn creates an electric field. So if we combine this principle with this principle, so recall that the induced EMF is given by taking the negative of the derivative of our magnetic flux with respect to time, because induced EMF is the same thing as our voltage difference, this is equal to this. So we get the following equation, which is essentially known as the general form of Faraday's law, where this is Faraday's law. So we see that as long as we take our integral across a closed loop of wire of the dot product of our electric field and dl, that is equal to the negative of our rate of change of our magnetic flux with respect to time. So this equation is known as the general form of Faraday's law. It gives us a relationship between changing magnetic flux and the electric field that that changing magnetic flux produces. So let's suppose we have the following diagram. So let's suppose we have a closed loop of conducting wire as shown. And inside this loop we essentially have the following uniform magnetic field B that is coming out of the board. So we take our loop and we begin to move that loop. So as we move our closed loop of conducting wire out of our magnetic field, a change in magnetic flux begins 
to take place. Our magnetic flux begins to decrease. Now, this implies that an electric field will be induced inside our conducting wire by the following relationship. And this causes our electrons to move within the following electric field. So, an electric field is generated as shown by the following green line. Now, let's compare two important types of electric fields. So, this is the electric field that we are discussing that is created as a result of an induced EMF. So, let's call this the induced electric field. So, remember that a point charge that is stationary will also create an electric field. So that electric field is known as the electrostatic electric field. So let's compare and contrast the electric field produced in the electrostatic case and the electric field produced in the induced case. So electrostatic electric field versus induced electric field. And let's begin by recalling what an electrostatic electric field is. So electric field lines produced by static point charges begin on the positive charge and always end on the negative charge. So these electric field lines have a beginning and they have an end. Now recall from this equation we know that our voltage difference that exists between two points A and B is equal to the negative of the integral from A to B of the dot product of this electrostatic electric field and our infinitely small distance dl. So let's suppose we have a positive charge and we have a negative charge. So our electric field lines begin on this positive charge and end on this negative charge. Now, let's suppose we take some charge, we place it at position A, we move it some distance here, and then we go back to position B. And position B happens to be the same exact point as position A. So if point A is equal to point B, then we have a closed loop. We have a closed pathway across which we're taking some quantity of charge. Now, from this equation, we see that the voltage difference between these two points, A and B, is simply equal to the integral of our closed pathway of the dot product of our electric field, which is produced by our electrostatic charges, dot product dl. And this is equal to zero. So if we take a charge and we move the charge from point A and back to that point A, let's call that point B, then the quantity of work done in that case is always zero. And that's because that stems from the fact that electrostatic force is a conservative force. On the other hand, let's see what happens if we examine the electric field produced in the induced case by our induced EMF. So on the other hand, electric field lines produced by a changing magnetic flux for the non-electrostatic forces form continuous closed loops as we saw in the following uh, case. So in this case, our electric field lines don't actually have a beginning and an end. They form continuous cycles around the loop as shown in this case. Versus in the electrostatic case, our electric field lines begun at some positive and ended at some negative charge. So, now if we take Faraday's law, the general form of Faraday's law, we get the following result. Notice if we take the dot product of these two vectors and the closed integral, that does not actually gives a, give us a zero value. It gives us some quantity given by negative d, magnetic flux dt. And that concludes because this is no longer zero, that means the forces due to changing magnetic fluxes that are acting on our electric
electrons within the wire are non-conservative forces. So that means the induced electric field is a non-conservative electric field versus the electrostatic electric field is a conservative electric field. So in the electrostatic electric field, if we take a point charge and we move it around a closed pathway, the work done will be zero. The voltage will be zero on the other hand, that is not true for the case of the induced electric field because the induced electric field is not a conservative electric field.